Hello Dickventurers! In today's video we're going to be going through a few different ways that you can do death saving throws for your players. Let's get into this. Yes, it is I, Nathaniel Gomezian, shopkeeper and proprietor of Gaming Treasure Chest. And as I said, today's video is all about death saving throws and better ways to be able to do it because, let's face it, when one of your player characters goes down in battle, it's a little bit anticlimactic that everyone else gets these big epic moves of attacking, spells, all that, and when it comes around to their turn, all they've got to do is roll a dice and they either succeed or fail and write it down their sheet, then you move on to the next player. But this can be some of the most dramatic moments for a player. This is potentially their character dying and it deserves a little bit more panache than just simply rolling a dice and nothing else happening because like, that, that is the last moment of that character's life. So why not make it a little bit more interesting than just simply rolling the dice and moving on. And yes, I know, combat can be long in D&D, but when it's the pinnacle moment of one of your player character's experiences, like I said, the potentially them dying, I think we can give them a little bit of time. So here are three things that you can do when your players are making death saving throws. So one of the first methods that you can use when your players are making death saving throws is down but not out coining a phrase from Gears of War. Because like in video games like Gears of War or Call of Duty and whatnot, sometimes when your player goes down, they can still move. Not get up or do anything important, but they can still move. And you can do this with your players in D&D. So when their health drops below zero, they fall to the ground and are critical. So they're unable to take actions, bonus actions, reactions, anything like that, but they can still move. They can do five feet of movement, which isn't a lot, but they are critical and like basically clutching their limbs as they're bleeding out through all their orifices and such, but they can still move five feet and like potentially means they can get closer to allies and they could also speak so they can talk to the other players and let them know that they're in critical and that they need some form of healing. So they're still able to participate on their turn by deciding if they want to move five feet and they're able to still speak. So they can't do any actions or anything like that, so they can't make any attacks and they can't chug a potion or anything because they're in such critical condition that they can't physically like a grab a potion bottle out and drink it. They don't have that capability, but as I said, it still allows them to be able to uh, speak and move. I think it's just a nice little way that your players so they're still involved in the action which is currently going on without allowing them really to be able to do anything crazy. I mean as I said they still can't um, provoke attack of opportunity because even though they are still like alive and on the floor they're obviously not posing any threat and you can have the rule that they can move out of an enemy's threat zone without getting an attack of opportunity like in terms of like the enemy getting an attack of opportunity because you can say like uh, they're basically like the enemy doesn't really see them as any kind of problem so they're not even focusing on them as they're crawling around the ground that allows them to be able to just move away from the enemy as they're moving closer to somebody but it depends on how you want to roll that that's up to you with those rules but it's just something which allows them to still do something on their turn and feel active and a part of the situation even though they're currently clutching their chest and dying. So the second option that you can give players as they're dying and rolling dice to try to stay alive is flashbacks. What do I mean by this? I mean that they can actually say something from their past that maybe other players didn't know about or something that like a, is just like a poignant to them. Because you know what they say, life flashes before your eyes as you're dying. So this is kind of a play on that. Oh, my life flashed before my eyes. It's really boring. So you can say something along the lines of, as you lie there, on the floor in critical condition, dying, knowing this could be the end for you. Your life starts to flash before your eyes. Please tell us the memory your character is currently going through. So that allows your player on their turn to express something from their character's past that maybe the other characters wouldn't know about. And obviously like a meta wise, they still wouldn't know about, but it's still something which grips everyone who's in the moment of like a potentially this character is gonna die. And it reminds them of certain things which has gone on in their past, you know, just to really tug at the heartstrings. And it allows a player to do a lot more than simply roll a dice, roll a three and go, oh, that's one foul, okay, that's my turn. I mean, obviously they're still gonna roll a dice afterwards, but it gives them a nice way to be able to express something. As I said, it can reveal things that players might not have known about a character's past. And it can also explain certain things of maybe why a character is the way that they are in terms of something that they've experienced in their past, which is explaining like why their characteristics are the way that they are. So it could just be a nice, fun way that like allows your character still be able to express themselves and potentially feel even more connected to their character in potentially their dying moments. 
Of course, I would say if you're going to go down this route with memories, that I would say to the players in session zero that this is how death saving throws are going to happen, because that means that they're not just caught off guard when it does happen, they can have some material prepared. So if they know that, okay, right, whenever I go down in this campaign, I'm going to be reliving through my memories, then they can prepare and be ready for the eventuality that if it does happen, they can start saying, basically, you give them a memory every single time when they're rolling a dice. So potentially your character gets to share three memories of themselves before they pass, or less depending on whether or not they roll on that one or anything like that within those things, but it gives them the chance of being able to do something a little bit more exciting on their turn. And so the third option that you could use when your characters are making death saving throws is actually allowing them to talk to death. So what basically happens is you can say that as your character takes that hit, they fall to the muddy ground of the battlefield and fall unconscious. But their eyes waken and they stand back up again. And the battlefield and enemies and friends are all gone. And it's just a perpetual void of empty whiteness. But you see that you're not alone. There is a hooded figure who, looking closely, looks like they have a skull for a face with two glowing blue dots in their eye sockets. This is death! <laughs> but yes, yeah, so you can go along those lines and basically um, it is that they meet death and death plays a game with them. Because you can say, like I do in my games, that death made a deal with an adventurer long, long ago that whenever an adventurer in this world goes down, that they have a chance to potentially come back if they play a game for their life with death. You have sank my better ship. Excellent! Yeah! I totally knew you put it in the J's, dude. Good thinking, Ted. You must play me again. What? Um, best two out of three. And so the player characters can choose whatever game they want to play and they can kind of communicate with death on their turns as they roll their death save from throwing. Depending on how they roll, depends on whether or not they're starting to beat death in the game or whether or not they're not beating death in the game. My players tend to use rock, paper, scissors, but obviously they could be chess. Whatever kind of game that your player wants to come up with, there is a there is a victor and there is a loser kind of thing, because obviously you can't just be like, okay, right, we sit down and play D&D &D with death. Ah, I think I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> a game within a game. Oh, it's so meta. So yes, as they roll their death saving throws, uh, depending on how they roll, as I said, uh, you can explain like you know, if death is winning or death is losing. But when it comes to that character's turn, not only do they get to roll, that they actually get to talk to death and like a potentially like a, have a bit of banter with death as they play this game or maybe describe the moves that they want to be making in the game against him and, and I always play death along the lines of like the Terry Pratchett a little bit of humor with death kind of thing. Death does have its positive aspects you know. It's easy to do lying down. Also have you ever considered the same on food? Because I mean he's got so many appointments that he's got to get to with so many people dying and obviously getting to have to play all these games with adventurers like you know clogs up his time so you know like you can, you can play a little bit humorous with that but obviously that's up to you however you want to play death but it's just a nice little way yet again it gives your players something to do on their turn when they're making their death saving throws rather than just okay fine it's your turn I roll my dice okay right yeah that's it and now I move on because as I said this can be one of the most pinnacle moments, well, the most pinnacle moment in characters' lives because that could potentially be their death. Now, don't get me wrong, in d and I know there's ways of bringing people back and whatnot of certain spells, but as I said, it could be very crucial and potentially heartbreaking for that player and if they just roll three fails and then that's just it and then like you just exp explain how their character is dead, I don't know, it's a little bit anticlimactic considering the fact like how much time they've invested into their characters. So this is just a little something which gives you options that they can do on their turns when they're making death saving throws that might just make them feel a little bit better. As I already said earlier in the video, I know that combat can be like a long slog and this is just adding to that, but I think that your players will enjoy it a lot more than just simply rolling a dice. I mean, please let me know down in the comment section down below what you think and if you've got any ideas about different ways that you make your players make death saving throws I would love to hear them so please let me know down in the comments. But yes if you enjoyed this video and liked it then please why don't hit that like button and also if you enjoy and want to see more things like this then why don't consider hitting that subscribe button you know do all the youtube -y things like a help a help a small man out obviously you don't have to it's up to you if you enjoy what you see and want to see more why not consider it. There is also the link down below to the discord server if you want to get involved in it I would love to make it a lovely D&D &D environment where people can ask questions or potentially find games and have a good time. Do not feel forced, I said it's a very small little moment, but if you want to join that, then please 
feel free to, as I'd love to build a community all around D&D. Also, if you want to support the channel, then why not consider heading over to the Etsy shop of Gaming Treasure Chest, where you can get your hands on different dice holders and the shapes of different weapons or many other things, all of which I've designed and 3D printed myself. So that's just one way you can support the channel if you want to, but do not feel forced. But thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. So until next time, goodbye.